Hello, and welcome back to our Bible study in uh, the Gospel of John. Today we are turning to uh, the end of John chapter 19, uh, verses 17 through 42. And this um, section of the Gospel uh, discusses the uh, crucifixion and its aftermath. Now, one of the things which we know about the crucifixion is that it is perhaps the uh, seminal event in the history of the Christian faith. Um, and there has been much uh, discussion and commentary about what it means. Now, most of the commentary about what the crucifixion means comes after the fact. It comes to us in the letters of Paul, comes to us throughout the sermons in the book of, of, of Acts, uh, in the letters of uh, Peter and John. Uh, the, the story of what this event actually means it is only important uh, in hindsight. In the story itself, we don't get a whole lot of a picture of what this event means in the moment. In John's Gospel and in the other Gospels, what we see is, is the story brought forward, uh, shown to us in a particular way. <clears throat> So as we go through the story uh, today at the end of chapter 19, I'm going to focus on one of the most important aspects that the gospel gives us um, about its importance as an event, both in the life of Jesus and in the life of the people of God. So we start with uh, the crucifixion itself. And it is a very simple story that Jesus is brought uh, bearing his cross to this place outside the city, this place called uh, Golgotha, the place of the skull. And he's crucified there with two other uh, uh, criminals, uh, one on either side, and Jesus is in the middle. And Pilate has an inscription placed above uh, Jesus' head, uh, saying that this is the king of of the Jews, and it's written in the three languages of the of the of the of the, of the, the, the day: Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. <coughs> and this creates some havoc with the chief priests, who don't want it to say that this is the king of the Jews, but that this is just someone who claimed to be the king of the, of the Jews. Uh, the soldiers uh, crucify Jesus. They take his uh, p possessions and his garments, and they. Um, divide them up amongst them, themselves. And there's a group of people standing at the foot of the cross, standing by the cross, uh, a group of women, including um, his mother, um, his mother's sister, and a couple of other uh, women. And then Jesus pr provides for his, his, his mother, telling the disciple whom he loved that uh, this is your a son, and this is your mother. So this is, is where you're going to find uh, your, your, your help, your comfort, your support uh, from now on. So the disciple takes uh, Mary, the, the mother of Jesus, into uh, his home. And then the death of Jesus comes in verses uh, 28 to 30, and it is a very uh, quick de de description as we notice in the description of the crucifixion in all the Gospels, that it is not a detailed dis dis description of what happened. The fact of crucifixion was known uh, to those who would be reading this story. So they did not need all of the, the, uh, de all the gory details of what was happening. And so what we get here is just a picture of Jesus dying, um, thirsting and then dying, the last moments in his life. He cries out, it is finished, as his last words in John's gospel before his death on the, on the cross. And those words have created all kinds of, of um, mystery about what, has, what is finished. Um, is his life finished? Is his work finished? Does it mean that all of the enemies that Jesus has faced, are they going to be finished? a whole slew of meanings that can be applied to that phrase itself. So, um, because it is the day before uh, uh, Passover, the day before the, the uh, Sabbath, 
uh, the uh, the Jewish leaders want the uh, uh, criminals to die quickly, so they're not hanging on the on on the, on the cross on the Sabbath day, which would be um, very very uh, difficult for for them. So Pilate uh, instructs that the uh, legs would be broken to uh, make death happen uh, more more quickly. Uh, the soldiers come and break the legs of two of the two thieves that are on either side, but Jesus is already dead. So they didn't break his, his legs, they only pierce his side to ensure that he is dead. And out comes blood and water. <coughs> and from, from there, uh, Jesus is taken down off, off, the, off the cross and given to uh, Joseph of Arimathea, who is a disciple, who went uh, to Pilate to ask for his, his, his body with Nicodemus, who earlier on had been a disciple, uh, had, had come to uh, Jesus in chapter 3, and later on he also was part of the group that was to, trying to make sure that Jesus was, was heard. So they take Jesus uh, from, from there, and they, and they, and they um, bring a mixture of uh, myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds, it, it, it says, and they take his body and bind it and lay it in the tomb, in this new tomb where no one else had been laid. And this is the day of, of preparation for the Sabbath, so they just leave, leave him there, and this leads us into the, the, the Sabbath, the day after the Sabbath, uh, the, the uh, first day of the week, which is coming up in chapter, in chapter 20, when uh, Mary and, and a group of the women go to anoint the body. So as we look at the story here in chapter 19, the story of the crucifixion, we begin to ask ourselves, what is the meaning that John wants to get across to us? And the main meaning that, G that John wants to bring forward in this passage is not particularly a meaning about uh, its future effects. Uh, we know that, that, that this is a fulfillment of the Father's will, that this is a fulfillment of, uh, God, of God's mission on earth, which Jesus says he has come to do fully. And so what we see in uh, John 19 is over and over again words that tell us that this is part of the plan of God. We see uh, four times it talks about the scriptures being fulfilled. In verse uh, 24, it went where they uh, take and cast lots for uh, Jesus' um, clothes. It says, this was to fulfill the scripture, which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So this first um, scripture is comes to us from Psalm 22. Um, Psalm 22, which begins with, uh, My God, my God, why, you, why have you forsaken me? And is used as a, uh, a psalm about the crucifixion uh, throughout Christian history. Um, and it's important to recognize this is a part of the story. As you look back at the whole psalm, you begin to see more and more pieces of what it is. Um, Next of all, we turn to uh, verse 28, where Jesus, where it says, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. Now, this uh, more, most likely is an allusion to Psalm 69, uh, where it speaks about being given uh, vin vinegar. So they, they take the sour wine, they put it on a sponge for, for him and hold it up to his, his, his mouth and he receives it. And then he says, it is finished that this is the end of the picture and the mission that they have. So this is, a, 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 again, looking back into the Psalms. So, turning again after he dies, we come to uh, an, 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 another important uh, Old Testament passage. In verse 36, it says that after they come to him and they don't break his legs, like they broke the legs of the other two uh, uh, thieves, uh, criminals on the cross, it says, for these things took place that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And this takes us to uh, uh, two particular uh, places in scripture. The first is 
in the story of the uh, Passover, the, in the story of the Passover lamb, that when the Passover lamb is killed, that its bones should not be broken. That's from Exodus 12 and Numbers chapter, chapter 9. Those instructions are given to the people of Israel that their Passover lamb, that is a symbol of God's rescue, that the bones are not to be broken. And then it comes again to us in Psalm uh, 34. We have another quotation that not one of his bones will be, will be broken. So this is, is, is it's giving us a picture not only of uh, God's rescue here in the cross, but, give, but taking us back to God's rescue of the people of Israel in the feast of Passover, on the day of Passover, <coughs> when he led them out of out of, of Egypt from slavery. So then we turn to the last of, of these uh, uh, scriptures, which is, again, the scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. That the, the uh, spear goes through his side, he's pierced, and he uh, dies for them. And this is, uh, again, a quote from Zechariah chapter 12, which talks, um, again, about that servant of God whom will be pierced for, for, the, for his people. Now, all this tells us that Jesus going to the, to the, to the cross is not uh, some accident of fate. That all of this happens according to the Father's will. And the Father's will has been set forth in the pages of the Old Testament. And as John is looking back, telling this story, he says, Aha, here, aha, here, I see the scripture fulfilled, the scripture ful ful fulfilled. That that becomes part of the story that gets told. That this is not a, a new story that is being told in the crucifixion. It is not a new story being told in the life of Jesus, but it is a story that is continuing God's story from the covenant of Abraham to through the covenant with the people of Israel, through the new covenant that is made with Jesus Christ. <coughs> so as John tells this story, and as John makes the, the claims for us, he wants us to understand that this is part of the Father's will for Jesus and part of the Father's will for us, that we would begin to understand what God is trying to do for us. So, that is our uh, journey into the crucifixion of what its uh, meaning is in John's Gospel, what it wants to tell us in John's Gospel. There is so much about the crucifixion um, that comes afterwards from the other uh, letters, as I said. But in this part, portion, we get the, the, the point that it is part of God's plan and that God's plan has been set forward in the pages of the Old Testament. So that is what I want us to take away from John's Gospel in my reflection for uh, today. Next time, we'll deal with John chapter 20, which is the series of uh, appearances of Jesus uh, after his resurrection. And these appearances uh, are to ever greater numbers of people. And the story begins to... Uh, to uh, take a different turn as we see uh, what God has in store for Jesus and his people. Let us pray. Lord God, as you have given us your son upon the cross, and the wonder of what that means for us, the fulfillment of the plan which you had for your people to uh, bring us out of the slavery and bondage which we had to sin, to bring us into a new relationship with, with, with you and to free us to serve you in great and mighty ways. We, we lift up these words to you today. In Jesus' name, amen.